Welcome to the dark forest. Jackie and her pals will never bore us. Shameless confessions about our obsession will make us laugh and smile. So let's explore the dark forest and dark down for a Hi, it's Jackie Cation, and you are listening to The Dork Forest. The website's JackieCation.com, DorkForest.com, TheDorkForest.com if you like a determiner. Let's do the credits. Patrick Brady's going to fix this audio and video. Vilmos works on JackieCation.com, and Mike Rickberg uh, sang the song with his wife, Sarah. He composed it, and he will sing his version of the Mexican hat dance at the end of this show. Thank you so much for listening to The Dork Forest. Here's a scoop. I'm doing stand-up online. A lot of Zoom shows will eventually go back on the road. Sign up for my email list. It's easy to get off. It's harder to get on than it is to get off. And no harm, no foul, if ever bored. JackieCation.com. Sign up for the email list. You'll find out about my weekly Zoom shows and stand-up on the road eventually. You may donate to the show if you would like. I would like. Sure, I would. There's PayPal, Jackie at JackieCation.com. And there is a PayPal button on both ZorkForest.com and JackieCation.com. And there's Venmo, if you like Venmo, Jackie-Cation, oddly enough. If you have listened to all of the shows, go to DorkForest.BandCamp.com, I think. The Dork Forest has a Bandcamp page. You can listen to a, but a lot of ones that are free from pre 2000 nine when I started pre-recording and uh then there's a uh, live episodes that cost me a couple of bucks so I charge you a couple of bucks there's also some stand-up there's a story uh album that's very exciting there and um other than that I have a lot of merch in my garage feel free to order if you need, know anybody who doesn't have any cds or the dvd and uh you can follow me everywhere at Jackie Cation let's get into the show Hi, I'm Jackie Cation. Uh, we are in my garage. Well, I'm in my garage. Uh, Brian is in Brooklyn. Uh, hello, Brian Parisi. Uh, Hi. Parisi? Parisi. Parisi. Yeah. We just talked about it. I don't yeah. understand, Jackie. <laughs> uh, Brian Parisi, you are a stand-up comic. You are a New York comic. And you have an album out on 800 Pound Gorilla called uh, Last Wishes. And there, I'm going to record my next one with them. And that is neat that it just came out and everyone should go listen to it. Last Wishes, right? Yeah, thank you. That's sure. nice. I didn't know you were uh, you were about to record with them. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, it'll be my fifth album. I was supposed to record twice in the in 2020. Didn't happen. We yeah, aired already, huh? Yeah. When did you record this? Oh, Last man. wishes. Yeah, I got mine in like right under the gun, like first week of March. Uh, oh, oh my God! Yeah, that is that is the final. Yeah. nice work. Yes, it was mm -hmm. like, and by under the gun, I mean like there was probably COVID in the room, but we didn't know yet. You, know? you didn't know. You didn't know. And uh, the aerosols had had yet to be labeled. And what, uh, where did you record it? Um, I recorded it at, it, it's the basement of this bar called The Big Hunt. It's uh, in, in Washington, D.C. Um, oh, nice. D.C. underground comedy. And I'm not sure if that venue survived. Um, oh, so so we'll, many, we'll so see. many problems. But we yeah. will all rebuild for that is the nature of the history of the world. Uh, yeah. but the dork forest. Now that, that is something. So by the way, uh, Brian Parisi, uh, is at Parisi comedy, P R A I S E comedy spelled comedy. So, and the name of the album is last wishes and it's on 800 pound gorilla and you should totally, uh, give it a jingle jangle and a listen. And now I'm ready to dork out. And I love that you were just like, just the one thing. <laughs> and I'm like, really? Let's do it. Pasta. Yeah. Pasta. That's Pasta. the thing. That's yeah. it. Did That's... you, are you Italian, Mr. Parisi? Yes, I am. Okay. Th that does help. That will, uh, it's either that or Chinese. That's what I'm looking for <laughs> is with, with, with your noodle talk. Yeah. Hello and welcome to noodle talk, by the way. Yeah, we would, I mean, we would have like, uh, I think they, I think if I remember right, that we stole it from them. If I remember right, I, I I think, I think it might have been. I th yeah. yeah, I think it started out there. But uh, you'll be happy to know that the Chinese are eating a lot of potatoes now. Oh, good. So they took those from, uh, and we all did, from Peru. Oh. So uh, that's where potatoes started. And apples, uh, something like uh, Uzbekistan or K Kazakhstan or something like that. Oh, wow. I didn't yeah, know it turns that. out the planet is round. And uh, if you keep walking, <laughs> you're going to bring somebody lunch. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's all connected. I like that. Yeah. It's uh so where so but you're uh did you do you think that you ate pasta because of the Italian thing or Oh yeah. I mean my so my dad is from Italy. Um so he like came here when he was a kid. Um so my dad's side of the family, big big Italian uh you know, and there's so there was always OG. Yeah. Yeah. So there was always like a lot of, you know, that's where I was first introduced to like Italian cooking was right. my grandmother. And then, you know, my grandmother kind of taught my mom how to do it. And my, so there was, you know, there was always Italian food. It was like every holiday is, is like a whole parade of, um, what, uh, what is your mom Italian? No, she's, she's not. Um, but it's weird. Point because of I, contention with my, with my dad and my mother, uh, because my dad's Armenian. Mm -hmm. And my mother was Irish uh, oh. or her, her parents were Irish and my father's parents were Armenian. And, um, and my, my, my grandmother was like, you know, she's not Armenian. And I was like, yeah, I'm her child. I'm right here. What are you, you're out of your goddamn mind. <laughs> like you were going to kind of conspire with her and be like, yeah, I know. Right. What's the deal? How did that happen? And uh, <laughs> so um but that is so funny um so she, but that was nice of your grandmother to uh to to teach your mom so did she make homemade did they make homemade pasta your family yeah i mean what's yeah mo most of the dishes that they made though it's it's interesting like people like a lot of authentic italian stuff that people make people use dry pasta um i think the idea that people have that like Italians always make fresh pasta. It's like, yeah, not always. Uh, not you know, always. No, yeah, it's 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 a lot of times I think dry pasta. But but uh, but yeah. So there were some dishes that were like fresh making pasta, but that's something that I got into more recently. Like I never, I was never involved in that when I was um, growing up. Um, that's something honestly. In the last like two or three years, I got into the fresh pasta thing. Oh, that's cool. And has it flourished in quarantine? Oh yeah. Yeah, I have, I have nothing. I mean, there there was, there was yeah, especially in the early quarantine. I would just every Sunday I was. It, it's sort of a long story, but I ended up in a living. We in have a house. time, my friend. Yes, you cannot. Uh, I don't mean to detract from the pasta, but I ended up living in a house uh, with my brother and his family, um, and just got out of New York when it, when things um, were going on. So I was like living in a house with him and his kids, um, and I was just like every Sunday I would just make a big pasta meal, and I and I would do. And I bought in quarantine during my, you know, I think everyone's had that phase where they're like, I'm going to buy stuff that's stupid. And yeah. I, I bought a whole bunch of like, you know, like a pasta roller and like different little items to do. One of with. one of these things? Yeah. The, okay. Like the yeah. hand crank pasta the hand maker? Crank. Yeah. We had one of those. We gave it away. Really? Uh, yeah. Because we were making it once. <laughs> and then we were like, the house isn't that big. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's definitely something that I was like, I think I'll use like because I know I'm into pasta. But like as I was doing it, I definitely had a moment where I was like, is this going to be a thing that I never use? But it ended up being it's a little easier than I thought it was going to be. Um, and I found that I can do it mindlessly. Um, oh. You can mindlessly make pasta, which is nice. If you if you're cooking, yeah. and you have like heat sources and things happening. You kind of need to pay sort of close attention once you've start the pasta process as far as making the actual dough and rolling the noodles eh, it's sort of like you know you can take your time there's no so i'll put like i'll put my headphones in and i'll listen to an audio book and while i do it and it's it doesn't feel like um somewhat stressful which cooking can kind of feel like okay so the pasta you're making doesn't have to be there's no time like aren't you afraid it's going to dry out or anything or no, I mean, if you keep it in a thing, so I usually keep it in something with a wet towel over the top. Okay. And you're just breaking a piece off and then- um, Rolling it and then feeding it through the thing and- Yeah. So you really don't like, as long as you do the moisture right, and honestly, even if it dries out a little, which I've had sort of that skin form on the outside, you can really kind of muscle through that and get it out. <laughs> it doesn't- it doesn't it's like, still fresh pasta. It's yeah. still probably better than dried pasta. I I haven't had a lot of I've I've had some fresh like there was a time when I went I, I would ask at every Italian restaurant or every French <laughs> restaurant, do you make your own pasta? Like a jackass. And I like to that. almost to a person, they said no. 
Yeah, it's and it's very it's very it's actually more unusual than I thought. I, I I assume the same thing as you. Like when I would be like, oh, if it's an Italian place, you know, I pictured them in the back doing the thing, making but, pasta. Yeah, yeah. It turns out they also purchase pasta, and mm-hmm. um, which is made in a factory, uh, in giant sheets, I guess, right? <laughs> and but uh, the, but the one. There was a place, and I and I will digress, of course, just to tell you this story. I went with Pete Lee. I read oh, I about it Pete. in the in the New Yorker or something like that. Uh, he's a Minneapolis comic as well. We're both Minneapolis, and uh, he's like the generation under me, I think, two maybe. And uh, the I read about a place on Staten Island, right off the ferry, that rotates actual grandmothers. And it's literally like she gets to pick what you're eating. She wow. makes the thing that she likes to make, that she's good at, that she's proud of. And that's what they serve that Sunday. It's is every it, Sunday. Is it like a pasta factory? Like they just, I'm picturing like rotating nonnas through there. Like, and there's like a night, uh, is there like a night shift nonna? <laughs> like what, how does that work? Uh, it was literally, it looked, it just looked like a small cafe. It seated, oh. ma- it maybe had eight tables, 10. Wow. And they were mostly two tops. And uh, so we walked in, uh, they looked at us and <laughs> we're like, we're here for whatever you're serving. And we sat down and we ate it and it was delicious. And we got to see the grandmother oh, in the background. Nice. And, uh, but we did not get to meet her. Uh, she had no interest in meeting uh, crazy Goyam Odar non-Italian <laughs> tourists from yeah. Wisconsin. So, do you do you remember what the do you remember what it was that you what made? the meal was? Yeah. Um, I don't. Okay, which is too bad because uh, yeah. I. Um, but it's worth. It was worth the trip, though. It was you, worth the trip, and it was. It, yeah, I've never been. I've actually never been to Staten Island, and I, I feel like this might be like. The one, I mean, I've driven through there, but I've never, you know, been like, I need to go Have here. you taken the ferry? I think I've been on the ferry, yeah. But I I don't, I've never been to like a destination. I think I had like one thing for work there once, but I never, <laughs> I've never like been like, I'm going to Staten Island to do a thing. And this might be the thing. If there's a like a non cafe. If it's still happening. Yeah, but just, it's yeah, still there. Yeah, Google that because I have to say that, um, that, First of all, I ride the Staten Island, I try to ride the Staten Island Ferry every time I go to New York because it's the cheapest view of the Statue of Liberty yes. in the whole wide world. Yeah. <laughs> and I have it's no true. interest in climbing the Statue of Liberty, so no. I don't need to go to the island, the no, Liberty there's no, Island. There's Who no cares? reason to go to the island unless you're in the seventh grade. When right. You, seventh grade yes, or seventh I get to meet Spider-Man. <laughs> I'll go if I get to meet Spider-Man. <laughs> those, are, those are good conditions. Those make sense feels valid and uh but and then my stepmother was actually italian and she was actually pretty good at chicken cacciatore oh yeah but that was the only yeah. when you make pasta are mm-hmm. you only making spaghetti or are you making sort of the shells and stuff can you do that with a thing um you can do lots of it's surprising the amount of things you can do there are some that are like it's like why they're sort of like why would you do this like i don't <laughs> i don't know many people that are like making like ziti Right, you like know, making the, the their two. own corkscrews or bow ties. I, so, I'm some not of Italian. those, some of the some of those ones are like it's weird because there are ones that I thought, oh well, that seems very complicated. But then you just twist it. Like there are some that I oh. thought would be harder that are easier, and, and it's like you don't you don't know until you see a YouTube video of a guy being like it's so like this, and then you <laughs> and then you're like, oh okay, I see, I see what you're doing. Uh, but yeah, some of them I don't. Some of them I, do, I don't do a lot. Honestly, I mostly do. I love it for um, lasagna noodles because you can get oh. them really thin. Lasagna noodles that are dry, store-bought, are so thick that you you sort of, I mean, and, and you sort of have to cook them before you put them in. Whereas when I make fresh lasagna noodles, I don't even boil them. I just layer the lasagna with the fresh noodle and then it cooks when it bakes. Um, and they do have uh, like ready-made ones, but I, I don't think they're amazing. as good. So yeah. Yeah. That that's a big one, and then like fettuccine is great. Fresh pasta, tagliatelle. Um, you what's know. what's the difference between fettuccine and spaghetti? The width. Uh, yeah, I fettuccine. Don't... Fettuccine is thicker. Yeah, and and okay. spaghetti is like round, sort of too. Round. 
instead of yeah, flat. I suppose. Yeah. But you're you're putting it through a flat. Okay. What? I don't know. I don't know how to do spaghetti in a thing. I really don't. Okay. I, I think there's those round. KitchenAid like attachments that can like yeah. sh- like shit the pasta out. Yeah. But I don't yeah, know yeah. how you would do it with a roller. I'm not sure. Well, first of all, you've blown my mind with the idea. Of course, you make a sheet. You put it through the roll, the big roller, and now you have a flat piece of pasta, right? Or a flat. It's really just dough, right? Or is it? Bread? Is it bread dough? What is, is it? Different? No, it's not bread. Yeah, it's it's dough. I think it's pasta dough. Yeah, pasta dough is different than bread dough. I did a episode about bread with Tom Papa. Oh, I've retained yeah. very little of it. Yeah. Uh, so talk to me. What it? How do you? What's in the dough of a pasta? It's very basic. So that it doesn't even have. I think the difference. The main difference is that uh, bread has yeast, and there's no, there's none of that with pasta. Um. So you you are. Uh, you're basically, you don't even get, and you don't do much of like the rising. Like, so you make the dough and the dough is basically just, there's two different ways to do it. There's, you could do it with just flour and water. Okay. Or you, or you can do it with uh, flour and eggs. I usually do flour and eggs. You make like a little mound, you put a little yep. hole in the middle and you, you know, you do it with a fork, you spin around with a fork and then you just kind of work the, the flour in until you get the right consistency of dough so it's very simple other people will put other things in it some people put uh olive oil in it a little olive oil or a little salt i salt? don't you don't yeah. oh, you don't add salt no i like to control the salt with the way the salt gets in the pasta for me is with the water so i taste the water before i boil the pasta and then i know you know how salty the water is and that's how the salt gets into the pasta plus in the sauce there's going to be salt too but Interesting. I am a big fan of not uh, of of not cooking with too much salt too, because oh, I'm like, okay. well, you can always add more salt. You can't yeah. take it out. Okay. See, this is you're like my mother. Not in not in any other way besides this. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm exactly like your mother. A lot of people don't know this about me, you guys. Me and Brian <laughs> Parisi's mom, uh, clones. Anyway, go. <laughs> um, yeah. So, like, yes, technically you could at the end, but the thing is, like the you know, the pasta is not going to absorb it in the same way. So the, okay. the t- the, at a certain point, you know, the point at which pasta gets done absorbing liquid is that's when the flavor of the pasta is kind of set. You can put the salt on top, but then you're going to get like big pops of salty and then yeah, the, crystals spot, of, and the yeah. spots you missed are going to be not the same. Like <laughs> it's not like evenly sort of distributed through the pasta. So to me, like the time to get the salting right is with the water. You get the right level in the water, and you know how salty your sauce is. You can kind of do that, and then also that is you have to factor in cheese too, because a lot of Italian, you know, a lot of Italian pasta dishes have cheese, and if you're using like a pecorino romano, that's very salty. Uh, yeah, yeah. Parmesan salty too, but it's like you're gonna so you you really are, you're kind of doing this like salt math in your head as you're going through. You're like, all right, you know, I would think for sure just because, which is why I thought people added the salt in the dry ingredients is to make sure that it was well mixed. Yeah. There, there are people who do that. There are people yeah. who do that. And I think they also salt their pasta water. I, I don't know that there's anybody oh. who just purely, um, I've never heard it. I've yeah. never heard a, a real Italian person ever advocate for not salting the pasta water. And it is one of those things that's like, when you hear about like, like I think among Italians, it's like, ugh, people who don't, <laughs> Yeah. Right, right. The judgmentalness, it's, There's, it's yes. everywhere. It's everywhere among every cultural group. It's what causes <laughs> wars. But other than that, the food is amazing. Yeah. So, but here's my, okay. So if you use eggs with your flour, mm-hmm. you don't use water. You, the only Correct. liquid is the eggs. Yeah. Yes. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. And then, so then you roll it out because you have the rolling kind of pasta maker, not a KitchenAid that'll create, you know, bullets of, of pasta. Yeah. So then you have a sheet of pasta and then mm-hmm. you cut that into either strips or lasagna squares. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, so sort of. So like you, yeah. first thing is that like, you're not doing it all at once. So I, I'm not taking the, you know, you cut up a little piece You want to get a piece that'll make a sheet that's the right kind of size dimensions, right? Otherwise, you're going to get like, uh, you know, you could end up with really long noodles. You could always cut it in half, but you're sort of aiming for a certain dimension based on the size of your roller. So you want to have, you kind of want to know how much that little chunk that you're going to cut off is, and then you and then you make it into a sheet. And then you can either take that, depending on the pasta, you taking that sheet 
and you are uh, like putting it through, there's an attachment on the roller where it can, you know, like split it into noodles or, oh yeah. Um, or sometimes like depending on the noodle, I'll just do it by hand. So like when I made, uh, I forget what it was. I forget what they're called. The ones that have like little, um, oh, that's going to bother me now. But, uh, <laughs> I do it with a little roller that has like little okay. ridges. It's sort of like the edge of a, um, of a lasagna noodle, how it's got that like little ridge thing. Oh, right, right. It's so kind of serrated made, looking. Yeah, I made noodles yeah. like that. I can't remember what they're called at this point, but um, is that like an ribbons. attachment onto the device? Or? No, I just have a little like it's oh, almost you like have a, a knife tiny. Thingy. It's like a mini pizza roller. Okay, that I'll use. But that's you know, I mean, you can do it lots of different ways. The other way mm-hmm. is some people will, if you're making noodles, they'll roll it up the sheet and then slice the edge of it so it makes a noodle. Oh, that's in a right, spiral. Right, <laughs> right. right. Yeah. And what I like is the idea. I don't know why I took this out of the mic stand, but here we go. Putting it back, putting it back. So um, if if you've created a noodle out of your, your sheet of pasta as it comes through, and then what blew my mind was that you're like, oh, you could just take that noodle and kind of roll it and then make a ziti or a, or a spiral cut, a, a, a a twisty noodle? You can do some tw- you can do some see the twisty ones are a little like they're it's sort of like there's a different technique with every type of pasta um which is kind of wild. So like um gnocchi for instance is a whole different thing cuz there's potatoes involved, but the way right. you're rolling them one at a time with your thumb to make that shape. Sometimes you'll use a little tool that you roll something on with like cavatappi and cavatelli you're like twisting there's all sorts of different techniques and I don't know them all, but I know every time I watch a video, there's not like one answer. There's like, oh man, this is, and then sometimes there's different schools of thought and I'm like, I hate you guys. <laughs> <laughs> right. And because, you, I mean, you think about it, it's sort of like uh, the bags of tortilla chips and that some of them are scoops and some of them are straight <laughs> and some of them are triangles. And you're like, so that's the shape of the pasta so that it can accentuate. Mwah! Yeah. It can make, it can make the food be better or yes. something. Yes. Is there's that cer- true? Yeah. I think it's definitely true. There, there's, there's certain types of, um, of pasta that, you know, you, depending on what you're making it, like certain noodles wouldn't be as good as others. I do think that some of it's a little like over, you know, it's like it still would be good if you put, you know, it's sauce and pasta. I'm sure it would taste good. But it's right. there are things of like, you know, certain ones hold the sauce better depending on how thick the sauce is and what's in it. Um, and then there are. Yeah. So there, so that there's some of that is like strategic of like what kind of pasta you want to use with which sauce. And, and what are you looking at? The consistency of the of the noodle or you like the thickness of the noodle or. Yeah. Or how it is shaped. Yeah. Um, I would say all of those things. There's also some element of like, um, you know, shapes. Like if you have like stuff, like a classic one that I like to make is called pasta chechi, which is like pasta with chickpeas. And you, you use uh, shells with that because it's kind of like the, the little bits of chickpea and stuff will get sort of inside the shells. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, a, well, you, yeah. <laughs> It sounds amazing. I yeah. love chickpeas. What yeah. are you doing to the? Chi- what are you doing for the sauce? So- like, that's, a sim- for that's the actually sauces? a real simple one that I recommend when people are like, "Hey, Brian, like, uh, I want to start making pasta. Like, what? Like, what should I? Uh, yeah. you know, where should I start? Kind of like, if they don't know how to cook, I'm like, this one you could do. Uh, right, because it's really easy. But you, it's just basically you're cooking onion and garlic and butter and uh, olive oil to start, and yeah. then you're putting uh, like chickpeas with the liquid from the. A can of chickpeas, not not dry. Cans. Okay. Nope. And you let the liquid go in as well. And then you're just sort of boiling them, simmering them until they're soft. You add basil and spices in there. And then once they're soft, you kind of half, you half mush it. So you leave okay. some of them whole, but you're mushing up a bunch of them. And then it becomes the consistency of a sauce. You put a little bit of tomato sauce in for color and that's it. Talk to me about the spices. You mentioned basil. What basil, are we looking at? Salt and pepper. Basil, salt, pepper. Um, are the main ones you can do if you want a little kick. I like to put a little red pepper flakes in with the red onions pepper and flakes. Garlic. That'll do it. Yeah, you, you've already sautéed the onions and garlic. Yeah, you've added the can of chickpeas. Yes, and and then you add your herbs: a little basil, salt, pepper, and maybe yeah. some red pepper flakes. Yeah, you you boil it off a little bit, and then you half mash it and yeah, add at, a little tomato sauce. At the very end, you're half mashing it, adding tomato sauce, 
And then the very last step that I do is I take some roasted red peppers and I cut them into little strips and I sprinkle them in there. That's something oh. that I actually got from, uh, I just really like roasted red pepper hummus. Oh, okay. And I was oh, like, yeah. ooh, chickpeas are uh, are good with that. So I just, I, yeah, they are. I added that in there. Yeah. Are, now, are you vegetarian? No. Or do you just like vegetables? And beans. Uh, yeah, I, I mean that's just one one thing I make. But yeah, I know I make a lot of like uh, meat ones too. I make a lamb ragu a lot. Um, How are you doing that? Let's. Yeah. I love rent lamb. <laughs> I, we have lamb every couple of weeks. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Lamb is great. Uh, so that one's that one is um, that one's a little. Uh, I'll give you sort of a shortened version because I don't want to give you unless you want. I don't feel like a step by step recipe. No, no. Take. You. Uh, it's almost impossible to bore me with minutia on the dork forest. <laughs> This is the safest space you've ever been in. Uh, Brian Parisi, by the way, uh, you should find his album. Uh-huh, that's right. We're, that's what we're doing, Rangers. We're cutting to tell you who I'm talking to. Brian Parisi. Last Wishes is the name of his album, and it is uh, everywhere where you listen to comedy albums. You know it. And it's Parisi Comedy, P-A-R-I-S-E, Comedy, C-O-M-E-D-Y. Thanks. Yeah, so Lamb Ragu, let's yeah, hear that. Yeah, Lamb Ragu is uh, about, um, you're going to start with like uh, olive oil and you're going to do garlic and uh, onions to start, you know, most sauces start yeah. like that. Then you're also doing, uh, you're doing anchovies. You take anchovies, oh, you mash sure. them up so they're like, you know, like you don't you don't want whole anchovies, but you mash them into a paste. You're also doing like, like rosemary, thyme, um, and then cooking the uh, lamb in there. Okay. And then you're browning the ground. I use ground lamb. I've also okay. used I've also used like lamb shanks, but that's yeah, like you, stew meat, right? Or, yeah, I've also used bone. I mean, I've used different things. I actually think that ground lamb is the is cheap and honestly like comes out pretty pretty good. Um, yeah, so, that'll make a nice ragu if a, a ground. Yeah. yeah, that's neat. Yeah. So I'll do so I'll brown that and then I'll deglaze the pan with some wine. Before I add the tomato paste, a white um, wine or a red wine. I don't I know. Actually, I actually typically use a rosé. It doesn't matter. I, I it doesn't matter. Just matters. a little bit of whatever you have for cooking wine. Usually, okay. it's whatever I have. But I, I am a very basic bitch, and I always have rosé on hand. <laughs> um, Fair so. enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so I'll do that, uh, and then you know, it's some crushed tomatoes, uh, not a lot, like a can. Um, and then you just want to like brown it. I think I've left out ingredients though. I think there's some, I also use some, um, maybe some carrots. Yeah. I think there's also some chopped up carrots in there, but okay. that's the general thing. And then you want to, uh, you want to cook it. You want to kind of like brown it along the bottom of the pan. It's one of those sauces where like, if you cook it longer, it helps. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like low and slow kind of thing, like a, a low simmer. Yeah, I mean, after it's you like, brown it, and, yeah, yeah, it's not like necessary the way it is for bolognese, but it's like I, I like to do it for at least you know an hour and a half or so, and then you know pa you do pappardelle is great with that. Uh, you do uh, you add a little, you can add a little bit of pot. You know, you want to keep a little bit of pasta water splashed in there when you start when you start to mix the pasta with it, so okay. it sticks on there. Pasta water is like glue for pasta. Is it? Yeah, it's like how you yeah. get it. That's some people make the mistake of. They drain their pasta like they're trying to like dry it off, like they're gonna put it in a fucking drawer. Like you, you right. like you, <laughs> like just drain it most of the water and then splash it back in the pan. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I don't keeps... know why I, I'm getting angry at hypo hypothetical people who are doing right. this wrong. Well, it's the uh, I say you. This is the hill you die on. The pasta water hill is the way to go. And but so uh, am I saving like a half a cup of pasta water? Am I saving? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would so, say if you save, I mean, it, it depends on what you're doing. There are there are recipes like if you make a cacio e pepe, that's a whole other thing. But how like, are you spelling that? Uh, C a c i o, and uh -huh. then a, which is and in Italian, and pepe, p e p. Okay. Um, what does it mean? It's basically cheese and pepper, and all that's yeah. all it is. It's like pecorino and black pepper on a pasta. But the thing that yeah. makes it a sauce is really pasta water. Um, you can use pasta water and uh, I use I use pasta water and uh, mascarpone cheese. Some people use butter too, but okay, um, it's just to like it's sort of like if you think about when you make mac and cheese. Yeah, you know, you know how you have to make it a little wet before you put that powder shit in there. <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, it's been a long time since I've oh, I've wow. decided to just go with an Annie's or a craft. Oh wow! I, I I make a homemade mac and cheese. I don't make the pasta. Oh my god! But uh, my mac and cheese is actually I got it from a friend of mine, and it is the best mac and cheese I've ever had in my life. And the wow. the tr- the trick, of course, is um, too much cheese and so much butter, and then whole milk. It's whole milk, butter. And there's a, a sharp white. Okay. And a gruyere. Mm. And um oh, and then a parmesan nice. for accent. And nice. then uh there's also on top of the pasta, you take like uh two tablespoons of butter and you brown some crout like bread. Bread crumbs, yeah, cr- yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you put <laughs> Croutons on top, and you're like, wait, is there not enough carbs? Yeah, okay, <laughs> all right. So I'll make this like once every year and a half. And, you know, essentially, Andy, my husband, will be like, okay, when are we having that again? Oh, I, yeah. it's, I'm jonesing on that. So, but it is amazing. It's it's delicious. And that sounds good. Yeah, it's available. I have shared the recipe. Everyone, you, I can do it again. Anyway, because uh, I know that people, there's no reason not to want the recipe, but uh, everyone should definitely have it. Yeah, that sounds really good. I've never, I've actually never really, that's one area I haven't gone down is I haven't really, I haven't really made much homemade mac and cheese. I should, uh, I should give that right. a shot. Well, cause you'd have to make hollow noodles, wouldn't you? Um, Can you make hollow oh, noodles? I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even attempt to make macaronis. No, that's oh, okay. Yeah. There's certain things where like, if it's too small and delicate, I'm just like, nah, I'm just going to get a box of that. It'll take me a minute <laughs> at the store. How much better could I be at that than this? Like, right. Yeah. But there's things, there are things though that I think are trash when you buy them. Like, Red water. Yeah. Uh, gnocchi is never good. It's, I mean, maybe I could be proved wrong. Uh, I challenge them, but it's, it's it, when you right, get but that, like, really that expensive. gummy, yeah. like those gummy things that they have in the thing. It's like. Those never are good when you make them. They're what are always, they supposed to taste like? What's gnocchi supposed to? It's like, supposed I, to be I, I don't soft eat a lot of gnocchi. Okay. And pillowy. Oh. Yeah. It's supposed to be somewhat, if it's real dense, you've gone awry. It needs okay. to be uh, sort of soft and it should be, but it should be sort of light. And it's, it's, it's like a mouthfeel thing too. Like when you get, when you eat a gnocchi, that's right. You're like, oh, wow. And when you eat one that's wrong, you're like, why is this sticking to every part of my mouth? <laughs> it's like the wrong yeah. texture. Like, but I've I've had some of the best ones I had when I was in Italy um, was was like gnocchi that I was like, oh my God. Like I, it, it's just unreal when you get it right. And my grandmother used to make it too. But it's, it, yeah. is, it is hard to do, but it's not, it's sort of one that's not worth buying the dried kind because it's just yeah. never going to be right. Okay, so just what is in gnocchi? You said that there was potatoes involved. Yeah. But I don't know. That's the main difference. It's really a lot like um, you're just basically doing everything I said with pasta with the exception of before that you are boiling and milling potatoes into like- Oh, yeah. it's a potato dumpling? Uh, the, 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 there's yeah. no There's no flour? It's just all- No, there's flour too. So, there, so it's the same as pasta, it has the same basic ingredients with the exception of- you are doing um, you are doing flour, water, and potato instead of just flour and water. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it's and it's sort of you've you're not using. I know you're not, but I I can't think of what what it would look like. But you're not using like powdered potatoes, like no. potato you you mashed boil, potato mix. No, yeah, you oh. boil potatoes and then you mill it, so you put it through like a food mill, like okay, those, yeah, to make it tiny, yes. to sort of. Not shredded, but pilly, like yeah. sort of tiny. So it'll work into a dough easily. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it is fully cooked potato. Yes. Yeah. Like soft, but not not crazy. You're not yeah. mashing it. Okay. It's uh, the imagery is is blowing my mind. So it's I just, just have to I can get tell it right. it's disturbing you a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to <laughs> try to picture it. And uh, and then what do you put on noki, or do you just eat them as is? Um, you put a sauce on them. You can, I mean, you can oh, really yeah? do anything, but yeah, you would do, um, you know, tomato sauce is classic, but you can also do, I think it's great with pesto sauce. Some of the best gnocchi I've had has been with pesto sauce. You can also do like a gorgonzola cream sauce. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. pretty popular. I, I mean, really any, any sauce. One thing you probably wouldn't do with gnocchi is you wouldn't do like a sauce that has a lot of other 
el- like a meat like a lot of meat elements or like pe- or like big chunks of things you don't really see that because it should it should be the thing it should be the thing and, and it's also very heavy like okay. if you if you eat you know if you eat a big plate of gnocchi you're, you're taking a nap like it's <laughs> it's, it's a, worse it's, than it's pasta a, I don't know and, why. But it's right. Very and pasta is intense. Yeah. But uh, so the pasta, uh, a gnocchi is what? The size of like your thumb, like that first joint of your thumb or bigger? Uh, big, bigger. Typically, there's there's actually like it's weird because they do. There, there are like little there's like a little there's little ones and then there's yep. ones that are bigger. So there's not quite an answer to that. Like that's standard. Right. But I say most of the time you're looking at like uh, S- sort of a quarter. If you do, or? if you no, nah, I would say like more like a a half dollar i'm sort of doing the like okay sign with my hand and it feels like roughly the the, the circle part okay yeah yeah um the uh but th- but then and then it could be any sauce just a, just a nice sauce right just a red sauce a white yeah. sauce just red any sauce a works. butter sauce yeah, yeah. yeah. do yeah. whatever you got to do just just try <laughs> not to eat more than like 18 of them i imagine yes if you ate 18 gnocchi there would be a nap i yes. think yeah. Is what you're saying. Yes. You would feel pretty um, bad, I think, if you ate a lot of, if you ate a big plate of gnocchi. Yeah. I, I've been there. It's not. The weird thing about pasta dinners sometimes is sides mm-hmm. because it takes up so much of the plate. Yes. That you're like, well, clearly we're using other dishes for salad. Yeah. Or if there's going to be a vegetable or yes. is it always like sort of a traditionally a one pot meal? I, I like, I mean... I think people do serve it with it, but I think the idea of, um, you know, having different things on a, on a plate is something that's like, um, it's not like it's not done in Italy, but it's a little more American than Italian. A lot of times, I mean, that's the idea of like primi piatti, secondi piatti is like, you know, there's going to be a plate with one thing and you'll do that. And then there'll be a plate with another thing. We don't need to right. use one. We don't need to have pasta with this thing on the side and then try to squeeze a vegetable onto the same plate. <laughs> like, right. I own other plates. Why yeah. are you? Why would you? It'll be fine. It'll they be can okay. even match if you need them. Yeah. It'll be. It'll be all right. Yeah. And okay. But it does um, lead to over. It does lead to sort of like you know over. I mean, part of my Italian food experience has been like, you know, you would have like a pasta meal, and then it's like, and then a whole other thing, and you're like. I didn't plan for, or like <laughs> visually now it's like, oh, that's gone. Like I'm, it's a lot of food. It can be my, I remember it feels my grandmother. Like several dinners. Yes. She would, she would make a whole pasta meal and then we'd be like full from a pasta meal as you would be. Yeah. And then she would be like, okay, time to bring out like this veal that I made. And you're like, what, what are we, where are we going to put this veal? Uh, <laughs> and yeah. Uh, yeah. We used to do so, pasta and meatballs before. Okay thanksgiving dinner like as a, a little a little warm-up pasta and like little she used to roll my grandma used to roll little meatballs little tiny ones and we would eat sure. a whole bowl of that and then and i remember my I would, we would have friends over you know and they'd be like what is this like what what do you because they Why? thought oh we these are just they we thought oh i guess they're italian they have pasta and meatballs for dinner on, yeah. <laughs> on thanksgiving yeah yeah instead then of it's thanksgiving like, uh, the All whole of a Thanksgiving turkey. meal, too. A turkey, <laughs> mashed potatoes, sides, the whole thing. She's like, well, you can't have a meal without just a little bit of pasta with some meat. What are you, nuts? And I will say that that uh, I've been to Italy a couple of times, but the, the one time I went with my husband and I, we saved up. We went for our honeymoon. Yeah. We spent a week in Venice. We spent a week in Florence. Uh, it was all nice. very glamorous. But the week in Venice, we get there. And the first night we go out to dinner and we sit down and we're looking at the menu and we don't speak Italian. Uh, oh, I've done a little Duolingo. There's, it's not enough. <laughs> and uh, so I've got a little book and, you know, we give it a shot. Everybody appreciates our effort. And then they go, it's fine. <laughs> Just speak English. And so, uh, but we appreciate your effort. But the thing is we order the prefix. We just get a, a, a meal mm-hmm. and it's, fucking fantasia it's just like one thing after another just keeps coming with tiny little shots of booze with every uh thing i don't drink my husband will have half a drink and he's like it's i'm starting to feel it i don't like it and i'm like power through it buddy that's where the good stuff lies and uh he's like shut up 
And so, uh, so we literally, that was the only night that we ordered like a traditional prefix kind of, because every other night we we're like, no, no, we have to find a place that will allow us to just have <laughs> one food right. or something. Yeah. Otherwise it's just going to be a waste or it. Yeah. Yeah. Some normal, you just wanted some normal amount of food. Right. 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 Or if it was going to be nine different kinds of food, make it tiny. Yeah. Right. We went, yes. we, uh, yeah, we went on our second honeymoon. That took uh, 11 years to save up for, uh, south of, uh, middle of France. So we're in Lyon and then we go to where the, the cave paintings are. And there's some sort of Michelin star restaurant that you can go to that has like essentially French omakase where okay. they just, they, you don't get to pick. They just keep bringing you things. And, uh, so we sat there and they just kept bringing us, but they were tiny bites, but there was a hundred of them, you know? And you were like, <laughs> oh, oh, all right. We were full 13. Play- oh, okay. No, no. Yeah. It's two more. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's, uh. And then, then they make fun of you because you're an American and you ate it all. And uh, <laughs> you were supposed to pass on half of those, and you didn't. Know. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I was like, I, I get a memo yeah. as to how I was supposed to respond. Yeah, we would. We would have. I mean, our family dinners would be like, yeah, like waves of things, not in French <laughs> size, in it's in full attention. And then the other thing that would be crazy about it is that you would be paired with like bullying. Um. If, if you didn't emotional yes like if you didn't if it's like uh, you know what i'm full i don't want ah come on like it's like you know there would be that and it's like <laughs> wh- why who yes yeah it, it took me years to get the, the inner strength to tell my grandfather no <laughs> like yeah i'm not going to be bullied into eating more meatballs by you my grandmother would feed me and then feed me and then call me fat <laughs> and i was like you did this yeah i don't think you understand what where the where this is a symbiotic relationship of you jamming armenian food down my face and then going why are you eating so much what's uh, what's happening yeah uh, you're never gonna get a man and you're like i i don't need one i'm i have thumbs <laughs> leave me alone and uh so <laughs> this is just confirming for me i've always thought of armenians as like like the middle east's like uh italians like just like you know what i mean right. like the italians of that region and uh because when i've met them i felt like there's a little similarity between armenians and italians that i can't put my finger on but i'm like there's something it's, similar it feels it's a, it's so interesting uh the different cultures the more i find meet people of different cultures you're just like Oh, we're all the same. Like, have you ever heard somebody like, I think the last time, and I've heard absolutely every single race and culture say, well, that's just Filipino time. That's just Armenian time. And you're just like, no, no, that's just rudeness. You don't (laughs) care about other, you're saying that they're humans and that they can be jackasses. Yeah. Don't be late. What are you nuts? Anyway. So, uh, (laughs) but it's so funny because it's every culture. I was watching, um, I'm actually working on a bit about it, but it's, it, I will not do it. Rangers, you are saved. Uh, so, but the, the, it's called flavorful origins and it is speaking of pasta. It is, uh, it is set in China and it's a docu-series on Netflix Okay. and there's three seasons and each episode is 10 to 13 minutes. And essentially it's, we go into rural China where there's still billions of people. But we go into rural China and we learn what the locals are eating. And they're and they're making noodles out of everything. They're making noodles out of potatoes. They're making noodles out of rice. They're making noodles out of noodles, out of flour. And um and it's it's beautifully shot. It's gorgeous. But it's it's another it's a glimpse into almost it's exactly what you were talking about, where you're just like, it's the same people. And and yeah. at some point. They they're eating something that locally that you're just like, and the the bit is about how every four or five episodes I'll be like, I would why are you eating that? Your ancestors were forced to eat that because there was nothing, <laughs> literally nothing else to do. Yeah. And they're rolling over in their graves right now. Um, yeah. And they're like, why don't you eat the rest of the goat, you idiot? We had to eat that. That's the bile from the stomach of a you're out of your goddamn mind. Anyway, so 
I like that. That's true. Cause I think in, in every form of cooking, there is that thing where like, I mean, when I was in Italy, one of the things that was served us was like tripa, which is like tripe, which is like uh, tripe. In, intestines. Um, and, yeah, it yeah, has I the remember consistency thinking, like, of a zipper. <laughs> it literally, yeah. when, when I've had Mexican tripe, it's had, it's, it's sort of, it has like a cartilagey. like if it hasn't been cooked long enough, you're just like, stop it. Yeah. Yeah. One time but, I had a, a, a grasshopper taco, a grasshopper taco, and I thought, this doesn't need to happen. Nope. And we were, uh, I was last year, was it last year? Yeah. A year, yeah, it would have been a, a year and a half ago now, probably, but uh, I was in Cambodia. And the side, the side of the road had grasshoppers, they had snake, and they had uh, beetles. And I was like, I'm eating none of that. I don't, I don't need yeah. it. I, I got nothing to prove. Yeah. Uh, we're going to lunch. Yeah. So I'm good. Uh, See, I don't you, care if you put you, barbecue sauce on it. You were smarter than me. I had this thing of like, I was like, well, it's like, a, I was at a Mexican <laughs> place and I was like, it must, they must be doing something to it where I'm going to be like, <laughs> wow, this tastes better than I thought bugs would taste. And then when I had it, I was like, this is exactly <laughs> what I would have thought if you put, if you burned a bunch of bugs and threw salt on it, this is what it right. would be. What this is, is this is poor people where rich people have said to them, you get nothing. <laughs> and they've said, oh, and then someone's, gr and the, the bit is literally just me saying how somebody's grandmother had to take this pen and turn it into something delicious. <laughs> and, uh, and that's, exa that's what all that is, yeah. you know? It's essentially somebody's grandmother <laughs> saying, oh, uh, we, we get nothing? And okay, so look around. <laughs> see what we can do look here. Look around. <laughs> it's, uh, here's some weeds that, they, that they've left us, and there's some bugs that they've left us. Let's see what we can do. And, and it's fine. I mean, it's, I mean, it, sustainability-wise, it's supposed to be really good for you. Very soil and green mm. kind of situation, but... I don't, um, I'm, I'm fine right now. I don't need to, we don't need to do it. So what is your favorite thing to put on pasta? Like, cause you're making these Sunday meals. Yeah. So which, yeah. the kids just want spaghetti and meatballs or what happened? Some of the, one of the kids, uh, it's my brother's kid. I, I guess I can talk trash in this podcast. She probably won't <laughs> listen. Uh, she's, she's five. Uh, <laughs> oh five are you yeah. kidding me there's no but there's not a bigger asshole in the world than a five-year-old <laughs> she would like uh, i would spend like all sunday like you know making this uh sauce and this fresh pasta whatever oh. and she would she would go i want sauce on it and it's like it has sauce on it what she meant was she wants to take a jar of store-bought prego sauce and dump it on the pasta and like oh. i know she's five and it's like yeah a, a she's five thing, but like i've never been more rageful <laughs> but it's like i, I couldn't let it out because you, you can't scream at a five-year-old for just wanting no, no. to eat it turns like, out you're the adult in that situation <laughs> i'm so sorry my apologies <laughs> i'm so rarely but it's just yeah i'm i was like oh i i i really <laughs> i really disagree with what you're doing right uh, <laughs> and so I stopped describing my mac and cheese as mac and cheese to children because they, they want uh, pasta and oh. cheese because if you say, Hey, we're having mac and cheese, the children expect it to be orange. Mm -hmm. And if it is not orange, right. I don't like it. Yes. But if it's pasta and cheese, they have no idea what the hell they're, what, yeah. what is that? That's very and smart. Yeah, yeah. It's uh I uh I have so many nieces and nephews, I have learned to trick the fuck out of them. I'm just like, yeah, what don't you like? All right. Uh because uh, I don't know if you know this, but Aunt Jackie doesn't make pancakes right. Uh how can I not make pancakes? Are they pan are they round? They're like, mm, mom makes them with ears. And I'm like, does she? Anyway, <laughs> what we're having then are round vehicles for butter and maple syrup. That's what we're, we're not having pancakes. We're having round maple syrup vehicles. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You gotta, yeah. you gotta kind of like, yeah, you have to trick them a little bit. It's, uh, <laughs> but no, normally I like to put, um, I mean, favorites. I, I would say when you, when, if I can get a, if I can get a really good flavorful meat sauce with a, with a noodle, that's, I mean, that's, that's close to the top. That's an ideal. Probably my favorite yep. thing to do, but it's a lot of work is if a lasagna comes out perfectly, 
it feels like a triumph because there's so many things that can go wrong with a lasagna that if you what can because wh- how do you do you layer saw so, like mm-hmm. what do you how do you how do you make lasagna <laughs> i like how I, you were I, you were trying to <laughs> narrow it down to the questions you had but you were like i think it's all the questions what? i think and lasagna and I, what <laughs> i and i think i know what i what the reason i don't make lasagna is because it's fiddly it's yes but um but I know, but I want to hear how it's fiddly from your point of view because I wonder if it's the thing that I have to do to make it stay stacked, to make it yes. look like a lasagna once you cut into it. Yeah, Hot. that's the, that's actually sort of the, a, a good way to think about it is when you cut into it, what happens? And that's yeah. the, that's the that's the main thing. But in within that question, there's like you know there's different things that could go wrong. If the noodles aren't right, if the noodles are like uh, you know overly hard. Then when you go to put your fork into the lasagna, it's going to squish down like you got layers of pasta blankets that are squirting out the fucking filling, which is bad. (laughs) Right. Too hard. It's going to it's going to send your salami meat flying in the air. Kind Yes. All right. You kind I think personally, too soft is a little hard to do for me because I think if it's soft, that's good with lasagna. But you can kind of if it's too mushy and there's not enough noodle to hold it into layers that's bad but i mean the other thing that can happen is if your filling is wrong that it can release liquid into the pan and then you know it can it can become soupy then it's soupy or can bubble up and burn or it can there's just so many things that can go wrong Uh, i typically avoid putting like vegetables unless they've been really cooked down into a lasagna but um, oh, so yeah. eggplant, like if you wanted to do an eggplant, you would have to cook it a lot. Oh, yeah. You well, you want to cook it so that there's it's no longer going to release liquid. Um, OK, if you're if you got anything in there releasing liquid, you're, you're sort of asking for trouble, especially when you already have sauce. And you already have a, a sort of cheese filling. I, right, I you, use, have a t- you already have a tomato sauce and a cheese. Those are the two that should those should be the the wettest things in there. Is that what I'm hearing? Um. Yeah, I like guess, mushrooms. Yeah. You would have to cut those. You'd have oh, to... I would. I, if I were using mushrooms, I would. I would cut them up and cook them down completely, and probably like almost drain them, dry them out before I put them in. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I I, I I usually do like a meat sauce. Um, I sometimes use that same lamb ragu, but that and I do instead of a ricotta. There's two ways you can go. You can go ricotta, or you can go bechamel. Um, I typically go bechamel. I think it's just tastes better but i'll do like a yeah like a lemon bechamel uh lamb lamb ragu and then and then mozzarella cheese so those are like the three layers and in between each of those layers you do a pasta layer okay and um is there a bechamel test where women just don't talk about their boyfriends that is a a (laughs) reference to the bechdel test anyway uh oh man that was good and it was it was a deep cut, and I literally cut. was was sitting here waiting to say it, going, "Just let him finish talking about the actual food that he's talking about, Jackie. Don't be a dick." And so I and you're gonna be, you're, this is probably gonna hurt your feelings, but I make something that's called idiot lasagna. Okay. And idiot lasagna is you take uh, macaroni, okay, and you mix all the things that you would put in the layers, okay, and then you put on top of it lasagna noodles so you are hiding jackie i gotta go i can't take this. <laughs> and wait, he storms you out you guys he storms out uh, <laughs> wait you're you're mixing the 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 macaroni with what before you put the noodle on with the sauce cheese, and cheese the red sauce and the meat and the vegetables and it's and it's essentially and then you bake it with a layer just to hide the casserole essentially underneath it uh, to make it look like a lasagna from above. <laughs> wow. But then if when I, you slice into it, you can see the fucking... It's a mess. Yeah. ...catastrophe that you've created. <laughs> right. It is You're not, not beautiful. hiding it for that long. <laughs> no, no. It's all an illusion. <laughs> and Because when I make real lasagna, and I haven't done it in a dozen years, is what I do is I is I make the layers and I and I put the food, like I put the cheese and the sauce and the meat or whatever it is in between the layers, and I build it. I build the lasagna. Mm-hmm. I then, in the pan, and then I take the lasagna and I put it in the fridge overnight, covered. 
so that it kind of sets. And before then I you cook it. it. Okay, before, before I cook you bake it. it. And okay. then I bake it. And it tends to stay together better okay. if I do that. Yeah. Um, and it certainly is not as embarrassing as idiot lasagna. Yeah, and, what, are you, uh, what are you trying to solve with the idiocy? Is it uh, the, just uh, someone wants lasagna? I don't want to make it. Uh, so they're just going to have pasta and sauce where okay. it kind of looks like lasagna when they first look at it. But you could do that. You couldn't you just do layers of like, what? why are you not just doing the layers of lasagna? If you already have the other ingredients, I don't get how this right. is a shortcut. Like, it's a short, to... well, because then I don't have to build it and put it in the fridge overnight. Oh, okay. I get you. I get you. I could just sort okay. of put it together and bake it and then. Got you. And then, and then eat it. Where do you stand, Brian Parisi, mm -hmm. on pesto? I like Do you pesto. make your own? Do you make yeah. your own? Uh, yeah. I, I, well, I mean, I have used. It's easy to make. I have used the little jars occasionally if I'm like sort of, I don't know, in a rush mode. But if I'm, if I'm, it's, you know, it's easy to make. So I'll. I'll I'll make it. Um, I will say it. it is one that I feel like I, um, it's not my best one. I just, it, it, the base it's, uh, it's, I only do it in the summer. I try mm -hmm. to do it in the summer. It just feels like a summer thing because of the basil, whatever. But I find that it's sort of tricky to get the right amount of garlic. I find that I, cause you're using fresh garlic, which is so can be so overpowering if you, if you miss it. Um, mm -hmm. So I've, I've definitely done that. I used to do, um, so I, I, for the longest time I did this comedy show until recently, until the pandemic, I used to do this comedy show in Brooklyn where I cook pasta for the entire audience. What? Um, yeah. So I would How make, many people? Like 40, 40, 50. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Okay. That's a lot of pasta. So I have these like steam trays in my apartment and the venue, <laughs> the venue is down the street and I would like cook all the pasta here in like put it in steam trays and then wheel it down the street to the venue. Um, and then I would set up steam trays and we did like, you know, the half hour before the show, people would come and do like a buffet style thing. It was called the pasta show. Um, yeah. And, yeah, uh, it was. That's yeah. awesome. And we would do, and we would do that. And so we'd, you know, serve people the pasta and then do, do the show. But one time I did a, a pesto sauce that had, uh, instead of pine nuts, I used uh, pistachios. Oh. And I was just doing a, like a little twist on pesto and I'm like, man, yeah. I'm so I'm so fucking clever doing a little doing a little pistachio instead of pine nuts. One of the comics uh starts swelling up because he was oh, allergic hell. to pet pistachios. <laughs> and not but like not but like not allergic to pine. So he's thinking, "Oh, I know I'm fine yeah. with pesto cuz pine nuts." And I and one of the comics who was on the show started uh having like an allergic reaction to it. And I remember thinking Did, like, oh. who was the jackass comic who said, can I have his time? <laughs> no, uh, so, so we're splitting that 10 minutes up. What are we doing? And uh, <laughs> yeah. I am. Wow. That's unfortunate though. Yes. So how did it taste though with pistachios? Oh, it was, it, it was honestly really good. I, I, I sort okay. of, I think it left a bad taste in my mouth cause I almost killed a guy, but it was yeah. other than that. Great. <laughs> and I will say that cause we grow pe uh, basil in the yard mm. and so andy will make pesto and then freeze it in ice cube trays and then oh yeah yeah yeah. and then we'll I've forget that. that we have it and then a year later he'll make it again and you're like what just happened too much Do you notice pesto any because i've never tried that do you notice any difference when it's like from the ice cube tray to the thing or does it is it like fresh pesto it's 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 you know it's better than jarred so i okay. don't know if it's better when he makes it initially it's always the best yeah when he freezes it, it's still better than the jarred, but I don't, I don't know that it's as good yeah. as when it not never frozen. Better than jarred is great though. I mean, if you got better yeah, than jarred, because jarred is be pretty great. good. Yeah, yeah, because jarred is quite delicious. Because yeah. I like a pesto. I don't mind a pesto. Yeah, it's uh, um, well, we are pushing an hour, my friend. But I wonder, uh, is there anything that I'm not knowing about pesto that we've not touched on about pasta? About pasta, about pesto, or about pasta? pasta, about pasta. pasta. Um, man, if I could give any parting words. On pasta. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dig deep, dig deep, dig deep. Uh, salt your water, people. Just that's it. I've got I mean, that. I've, and I've, I've and got the thing that is, you taste, you taste it. If you don't know what it, what the right level is, you taste it, and it should be like the ocean. That's you take a little spoon and you taste it. Oh, yeah, that's a easy okay. way. That's plenty. That. That's a lot of salt. Also, yeah, it's, it yeah. is. It is. But, the, you know, but the pasta only absorbs a certain amount of it. The other thing mm -hmm. I would say is 
you know, be aware of the time. I feel like people, those are the two biggest mistakes are like that and don't, and take it out before, you know, it's ready because it's going right. to keep cooking. It's just like meat. You know, it's, if you take it out when it's like, oh yeah, this is soft enough. It's going to be too soft by the time you get there. And okay. Especially if you're mixing it with a hot sauce, that's mm-hmm. another couple of minutes that it's basically cooking. Okay. Yeah. yeah that so, makes sense. You know, this is like probably easily Googleable wisdom that I'm putting out there, but it's fundamental. I was, it's <laughs> fundamental. And I would say, are there, are there any YouTube or Instagram accounts that you're loving? Oh, that, um, is there anything that, that you've ended up like I had, uh, someone do a dork forest about charcuterie boards Yeah, and she turned me on. She was like, I am not as good as this person on Instagram. Yeah. And I have been following that person on Instagram and they are, they make a hell of a board. Okay. It's called ain't too proud to Meg peg. I like something like that. Ain't too proud to peg. That sounds like a different account. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> that, that does sound porny. Sorry about that folks. Um, I have a plug. Okay. This is like, I'm being an old man right now, but <laughs> instead of own it, instead of plugging an Instagram account, I have this cookbook from a woman who's dead. <laughs> oh, perfect. I love that. Uh, I love a book. This is, uh, Marcella, Meredith? Marcella no, Hazan. Oh, it might be backward because of the Oh, Marcella Hazan. Mm. Yeah, Marcella Hazan, H A Z A N, and it's the essentials of classic Italian cooking. There's, it's like a, a mix of like a cookbook and like sort of an advice book, and oh. it has a lot of stuff about pasta, and it's really good. Um, and, um, you know, she's dead, so I'm not getting anything from this. Uh, right. She. Right. <laughs> you guys want to give Brian some money? Feel free to find his uh, album. <laughs> it's called Last Wishes, Eight Hundred Pound Gorilla, and it's Parisi uh, comedy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but this cookbook, but this cookbook is just going to give you information. Just, yes. Yes. And it's a, re- it's a really good one. Um, and then I, I, you know, I follow some, I, 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 I'm not really aware of anybody. I can't think of anybody that comes to mind that I'm like, but I, every time I've wanted to make a, a fresh pasta thing, YouTube videos are like pretty great. Uh, and easy enough and easy. to, and, and whatever you Google, just try, just try a couple of different ones. If, if you're not, if you're not feeling it. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. I would make uh, so much one sense. other thing is I would I would rec- I have I do like the pasta roller I have it's like an Imperia brand they're really cheap uh, okay and and I recommend those over the KitchenAid uh, things which sort of like stretch the pasta instead of uh, rolling it it's a kind of a different thing and I recommend you watch th- at like ten minutes of this flavorful origins thing on Netflix oh, because yeah. you will you were going to see some pasta working going down in rural China that will make that'll blow your mind and you're like I've never uh, the theory that I've come up with is that they've they've sh- the Chinese government has shot this to try to encourage tourism between provinces mm. because each season is a different province in, of China. And there's only like six or 10 episodes and they're all 10 or 15 minutes long. Yeah. And they're so beautifully shot. The food is beautifully shot. The landscape is beautifully shot. Even like weird goat bile soup. You're like, no, 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 that's good looking. I think I'm never, never eating that. That makes total sense as a theory. Um, And I love, I sort of almost hope it's not true because if it's not, then you have like the most obscure conspiracy theory. (laughs) <laughs> that there right, ever right. was like you want to know what right. this show's about it's about tourism between provinces within china <laughs> jackie cation recommends we all invest in tinfoil futures get in on the rattles wrap uh brian parisi thank you so much for doing this show this oh, was thank you for fascinating me. and delicious sounding uh rangers you know the rules out there be good to each other take care of each other my hat my hat my hat they're dancing around my hat, my hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh, my God. Thank we you. Why don't we just call that as the end of the show?